You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 15th of August and I'm Kate from Milford. This week, the US released their July CPI print, which saw headline inflation at 8.5% year-on-year, which is a decline of 0.6% from the previous reading, and was also below expectations of 8.7%. Digging into the details, the key driver of the lower inflation print was declining energy prices, while food still increased. Core inflation remained flat with June at 5.9%, which was also below expectations, but did highlight that the stickier parts of inflation, like wages, still remained high. Following the CPI announcement, equity markets rallied, reflecting the view that inflation has peaked. This CPI reading reduces the likelihood of an aggressive 75 basis point increase in the Fed rate at the next meeting in September. Consensus is now assuming a 50 basis point increase in the Fed rate. Also from the US, the producer price index print came in weaker than expected at 9.8% in July, down from 11.3% in June, which was also below consensus at 10.4%. The University of Michigan consumer sentiment Preliminary estimates for the US increased to 55.1 in August, from 51.5 in July, the highest in three months and beating market forecasts of 52.5. The data showed inflation expectations for the year ahead decreased 0.2% to 5%. The final data for August will be released in a few weeks. Turning to equity news, Australian reporting season kicked off this week, with several companies reporting their results. Starting with the banks, the key takeaways was ANZ had a good result and a raising capital to buy Suncorp Bank. NAB and CBA both showed cost pressures which weighed down their results and they expect these pressures to continue into the future. Interestingly, in the CBA result briefing, the Chief Executive Officer Matt Common provided some macro insights and outlook commentary, such as CBA has seen a reduction in the spend across debit and credit cards, particularly in discretionary items. Also, 40% of mortgages are still fixed, which will result in a lag to the impact of rising rates. And finally, he anticipates global growth to slow significantly, and expects a recession in the US and the UK. Telstra also reported their full-year results, which showed their revenue and underlying EBITDA in line with expectations. NPAT was roughly 6% above consensus, driven by lower interest expense. The key positives for the result came from the mobile segment outperformance, an increase in their final dividend to 8.5 cents per share from 8 cents previously, and solid free cash flow of $4 billion. In terms of guidance, the market focused on the 2% underlying EBITDA downgrade to FY23 numbers. Generally speaking, equity markets have been resilient but the overall results so far have been fairly benign and largely in line with expectations. Also in equity news, BHP submitted a non-binding indicative proposal to acquire 100% of Oz Minerals. The proposal to acquire Oz Minerals for a cash consideration of $25 per share, which reflected a 32% premium to the previous close price, was rejected by Oz Minerals Board, as they believe the offer undervalues its copper and nickel assets. Looking to the week ahead, Australian reporting season continues, with many companies reporting full-year 2022 results, including large names like Westpac Banking Group, BHP, CSL and AGL Energy. In economic news, you can look out for the Australian unemployment rate print, where consensus forecasts the unemployment rate to be 3.5% in line with the previous reading. The RBNZ press conference on Wednesday will provide details on their recent 50 basis point interest rate decision. In global news, the euro area GDP growth rate print will be released, where it's forecast to grow at 4%. Also in Europe, we expect to see the inflation print, which is forecast to be 4%, up from 3.7% last month. The UK unemployment rate is forecast to remain flat at 3.8% and a headline inflation print is expected to be up 0.4% to 9.8%. In the US, retail sales data is expected to fall by 0.9%. Retail sales data is a good indication of the US consumption conditions. And finally, the FOMC minutes will be released later in the week. Thank you for listening and we'll see you next week.